Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar on designing solenoids and actuators. My name is Arvind Krishnan and I will be your host today. And on behalf of EMWorks, I welcome you all to this session. Let us quickly look at the agenda for the day. We're going to start with a brief introduction about what linear actuators are and look at some of their applications. Um, and we will jump into what are the challenges in actuator design and simulation. Then we will look into the EMS approach for simulating actuators. We're going to take a look at some of the advantages that this approach presents to us. And finally, I'm going to uh, spend a lot of time showing you the product and how we take in um, a real-life actuator, uh, linear actuator example and solve through them. And then we will uh, tell you briefly about the EMWorks family of products. And finally, we will reserve uh, some time for question and answers. Um, just to let you know, uh, this uh, webinar is being recorded. And, uh, and a, a link to this recording will be sent to all the people who have registered. Okay. So if you need to ask me any question during any time during this webinar, Please use the chat window that is there in the GoToMeeting and you can type in your questions and I will be happy to answer them at the end of this session. So with that, uh, let us start today's webinar um, and uh, let's go on to our first uh, topic. We're going to talk about linear actuators. You know, sometimes they are called as solenoids, uh, etc. But basically their principles are similar and, and this is what it is. Okay. In short, it is some kind of an electromagnet where you have a core and we have a coil that is bound around the core. Okay. They can be made as a, quite strong by applying uh, a very high current through this uh, coil. Okay. And uh, when you have a current applied through this coil, it acts as an electromagnet, as I said. And so any ferromagnetic substance in its vicinity is going to be subjected to a force and this force can cause some kind of a movement. And this principle is being exploited um, to come up with a wide variety of actuating devices. Um, we can club all of them under the term linear actuators or solenoids. Now, as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, this technology is very powerful and has uh, quite a lot of applications. Um, and uh, some of them uh, are in the uh, actuating locks, valves, MRIs, hard drives, speakers, microphones, voice coils, and they find their use in a variety of applications and industries ranging from automotive, aerospace, defense, chemicals, etc. In a nutshell, basically what a solenoid does is it turns some kind of electrical energy as you input a current through the coil and it converts that into some kind of a movement or you could say some kind of a kinetic energy. So it, um, it's, it's, it's a device that can convert an electrical energy into kinetic energy of uh, say the armature or the plunger. Let us look at uh, some of the challenges that are there um, when, uh, when you design uh, such a linear actuator. Okay. So the first thing you need to know is we would like to understand what are the forces acting on the solenoid or the plunger, okay, in our case. And we need to know this force as a function of the location of this plunger. And that's always a little tricky because there's a lot of factors that determine the force acting on a plunger. Uh, some of them may include uh, the number of uh, turns of the coil, the current that goes through the coil, the air gap that is there, the material with which the, uh, the plunger and all the other components of the solenoid are made and so on. So because uh, there is no one parameter that dictates what the forces are going to be, um, it's actually uh, a tricky uh, problem that to be solved uh, using hand calculations. Uh, although there are solutions available, oftentimes um, they fall um, quite short of the accurate values. And hence we resort to using uh, computers uh, to solve these kind of problems. And today uh, we will present you one such solution uh, designed and developed by EMWorks that helps you to design uh, and study solenoid forces. 
So the next challenge would be once I get the force then we put that into the force equation F equals MA and how do I really predict the motion? Okay? If the force was constant it is quite easy to predict the motion but as you change the force uh, as the solenoid moves the force varies and, and hence it becomes quite a tricky problem uh, in itself just the motion part of it. So predicting the motion is another challenge. Um, then the third thing is we would like to understand uh, how the magnetic field or the magnetic flux densities are distributed uh, in my model. Um, and we would uh, in particular uh, like to understand how close to saturation some of my critical components like armature etc operate. And uh, you know engineers have uh, long known that uh, if you operate at somewhere close to 80 to 90 percent of the saturation rate you get the best kind of efficiency. Um, for that particular device uh, under under a particular operating condition. So it's important to understand how the magnetic flux density is also distributed. So uh, with some of these challenges let's look at how EMS products will help you to bridge these challenges and help you to design these solenoids. Now EMS approach to the actuator simulation is, is quite simple. Uh, we have uh, what is known as a 3D geometry of the solenoid and that is entirely uh, done used in a CAD system. For example, we will take uh, SolidWorks as an example today. But EMS works with the Autodesk Inventor as well as SpaceClaim. So um, you can use a variety of uh, CAD tools to uh, create your model. Um, and uh, once you create your model, you can go ahead and do a simulation right inside your CAD system. Um, and then the simulation results uh, are going to be uh, the forces, the, the magnetic flux distribution uh, and so on. Now based on these simulation results you can come up with a variety of things. For example if you want to design a spring uh, that is uh, used in the solenoid, um, you can do that using the simulation results. Now uh, based on the simulation results you might oftentimes find out that uh, your um, your initial design may not be suitable for uh, for what it is intended to do. As a result, you can just go back to your solid geometry, uh, maybe change some things, maybe you want to make things bigger, maybe you want to add more current, maybe you want to have more turns, etc. And once you make these changes, you can go back to your simulation and understand how these changes affected your results. And then this uh, process, iterative process can go on till you perfect uh, a design that is suitable for the application. And uh, the entire environment uh, in which the EMS products work will enable you to do that. Now after we uh, just discussed the approach of EMS, let us understand what are the advantages to this approach. Um, and, and uh, I haven't showed you the product so you have to take my word for some of these advantages but later on you will see clearly um, how these advantages um, relate to the product. Uh, it's integrated inside one interface so for example if you are a CAD user who is using say SOLIDWORKS or Autodesk Inventor or any of the CAD systems, we have EMS plugins that work right inside your CAD system. As a result um, there is no need for you to leave an environment that you are very familiar with. And that automatically implies that it seamlessly handles geometry and all kinds of geometrical uh, complications. You know, um, if you have to take uh, a CAD geometry uh, out through any of the neutral formats and take it into a different system, uh, it presents its own challenges. There will be corruption of the geometry, there, there could be problems with tolerance and accuracy, uh, dimensions, etc. None of those things um, will be a challenge for EMS. And finally, uh, you can obtain um, your, your uh, physical geometry and its drawings, etc., as well as your um, uh, results from the simulation right inside one location. Uh, with this, I think uh, it's time, um, uh, you know, after the short intro, uh, to go into the product and, and take a look at um, how one can design um, and come up with uh, some uh, uh, scenarios for uh, for a linear actuator. Um, now what you see in this picture um, is a linear actuator that we will be uh, studying in depth and uh, particularly 
of interest to us uh, is going to be what are the forces acting on the armature or plunger that you see here which can move about inside this uh, uh, cylindrical region. Um, what are the forces acting on it at various positions? And then we will come to the most extreme position uh, which is uh, the position, uh, the maximum position this uh, uh, armature is going to be sent inside and then this is a position that we will use to understand the force uh, that can be used to design a spring and, and, and the way the solenoid operates is um, the starting position is like this, it's open and then when you uh, excite the, the, the coils uh, there's going to be a force that is tending to move this armature uh, in the, in the uh, upward direction trying to close this air gap that you see here and as uh, the armature moves uh, and closes the air gap um, um, we would uh, like to understand what are the forces at various instances and once it goes towards this entire stroke length uh, we would like to understand that's the extreme position and that is a position where uh, we will use the forces to determine what is the spring constant or, or how do you design a spring for this particular solver. Okay, with that, uh, let me just uh, switch on uh, to my SOLIDWORKS screen. I hope uh, you're all able to see the screen right now. Okay. Um, now, uh, what I have here is the uh, model, uh, model of a solenoid uh, valve uh, that is created using SOLIDWORKS. Uh, I have several components. I'm going to hide them. Uh, notice that I've turned on my section view so that we can clearly see inside what's going on. So, so this is how it looks from the outside. Um, when I turn on my section view, uh, it's clear to see uh, what's going on from the inside. Uh, let me now uh, briefly uh, tell you what are the components. Uh, we have an armature here that can move about inside. Uh, we have the coils. Um, and uh, this is a wound coil and we can represent that uh, as just a volume annular ring uh, here of a, of a particular volume. Um, then we have uh, the solenoid that's completely enclosed. Uh, you have this enclosure, um, you have the top enclosure, the bottom enclosure uh, here. So this is an assembly that is created uh, inside a CAD system like SOLIDWORKS and we can analyze the same here. So to do uh, any kind of simulation uh, in EMS, uh, we can go to the EMS tab, as you see here, and uh, we can uh, create uh, these simulations. I have created some of them here. We will be using that, but let me go over the steps required to create a simulation. The first step that is needed uh, to create a simulation is to create a simulation study. Now, EMS presents various types of simulation studies. Um, in this particular simulation, our objective is to understand the forces at various positions. To be able to do that, a magnetostatic simulation would be sufficient and we will be um, doing that uh, for this entire demonstration. EMS also has some electrical capabilities. We have electrostatic, electric conduction, AC electric, and uh, also um, AC magnetic and transient magnetic. So this completes uh, six different simulation options that are available to all uh, users of EMS. Okay. Now, once you create a study, it creates a study tree, as you see here. Uh, and uh, the next step uh, is to define the materials that you see. So um, air is a geometry that I've actually hidden. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the air geometry. Now this is the air geometry. And uh, as you see here, um, this is vital because the magnetic field exists uh, and, and, and is present in the air uh, region also around and inside the solenoid. It's important to capture that and hence modeling of air uh, in any finite element based uh, EM simulation becomes absolutely critical. So one can go ahead and define a material so you can uh, you can apply a material um, for air and uh, EMS comes out with its own uh, material database that helps you to define various materials. Now this is a fully customizable material database that helps users uh, to apply their material. Also you can create your own material. So for example, EMS comes with, with a wide range of uh, steels that are used uh, in the industry. It also comes up with many ferromagnetic substances, conductors, etc. So we apply air 
and then um, for the coil we apply copper so let's um, we go to the favorite material we go ahead and apply copper um, and then for the uh, for the other components that are basically um, ferromagnetic in nature we go ahead and apply uh, uh, 12L14 that is some kind of a, a ferromagnetic substance that is uh, that can be used uh, for these designs and finally there is a there is a part inside here which is completely uh, stainless steel so we go from the recently applied materials apply uh, stainless steel note that this stainless steel is uh, non ferromagnetic and uh, does not really affect uh, the magnetic field um, in the uh, region here nevertheless it is used in assembling this solenoid and one can now accurately represent these things for simulation now once you apply uh, materials to different components the next uh, task would be to apply uh, a coil uh, for example uh, we're going to create what is known as a wound coil we're going to select the components that comprise the coil we're going to select the face in which um, the current comes in so I can actually uh, look at it um, the direction of the current and if, if required you can invert the direction of the current uh, in a solenoid of this uh, type it really doesn't matter uh, how you supply current uh, the uh, the force acting on this plunger will always be in such a way uh, to close this air gap that you see in the top okay so once we apply uh, a coil uh, we have to specify the number of turns and the current per turn so here we have about 700 turns I guess uh, and uh, about uh, less than an amp uh, maybe close to 0.8 amps per turn. So once you define a coil, um, we we uh, create under the coils folder um, the coil. So at any time you feel like editing the coil, uh, you can go ahead and do that. So let me just uh, quickly go ahead and understand what are the coil uh, parameters uh, that was used uh, in this particular problem. Um, so we have 720 turns, 0.8 amps per turn and then the wire gauge of uh, the wire that is used to wound the coil is, is a 27 gauge wire. So uh, let's go ahead um, edit our coil. Um, so anytime you want to edit some of the definitions that you already made it's quite simple. So 27 turns um, I think we had 700, uh, 720 and 0.8 amps per turn. So with that we define um, uh, the coil. So once you define the coil, the final thing is to understand what are the forces acting on the plunger. So you're going to go ahead and uh, request the program to compute the force acting on the armature. And then once the pro computation is completed, the program gives you the force acting on the armature. Basically, the force is going to dominate along the y direction, and that's the movement direction, um, and, uh, and you're going to get that. Uh, to solve this particular problem, uh, uh, we will have to solve the study, but uh, uh, I have already pre-solved these things, so let's jump in right into the results. Um, the first thing, as we noticed here, is we would like to understand what are the forces acting on the plunger at this particular position. So we, we go to the result table, and as we see in the result table, um, you can see that the force acting is, 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 is dominated in the y direction and it's about 1.23 uh, Newton. So that is really the force uh, with which uh, the plunger is, is going to move. Okay, So um, that's the force acting at its extreme position. So that kind of tells you if your number of turns and the current per turn um, are all uh, good enough uh, for this plunger uh, to actually move. Um, now, um, in addition to the force acting, one can also uh, determine what is the magnetic flux density distribution in the model. And as you see here, here is a section plot of the magnetic flux density distribution. You can see the armature, uh, the, the red regions in the armature shows you um, the flux density is, is uh, the high, power, high regions of the flux density. That's close to about 1.56 Teslas. Notice that the saturation for this particular material is close to about 1.92 Tesla. So um, at its lowest point uh, for this particular excitation, uh, this material is, is still a little ways away from saturation. And, and um, 
but that would change as the plunger moves up as we would notice okay now uh, this is one uh, such scenario where the plunger is at its extreme uh, uh, lower position okay now let's go and use some of the uh, capabilities inside the cat system so here i have moved the plunger uh, to a position where it is completely uh, uh, closed or uh, basically this is a position in which the spring is fully compressed notice that we don't really have a spring but that's the whole idea is to be able to design a spring um, that is going to be uh, acting from here to here uh, that's that's going to get compressed as the solenoid uh, moves up and now once it's at its compressed position if I turn off the current the spring will ensure that the uh, actuator uh, moves back to its original position so that's kind of a mechanism that this particular device is going to follow okay now to be able to design a spring uh, that might be suitable uh, to do this one needs to know what is the force acting now uh, on the solenoid uh, on the plunger um, uh, at when it's at this particular position and now uh, this force and the spring force must balance each other if you have to include gravity you can do that um, and you will have to come up with what is the right uh, spring constant for the for your spring so uh, let's go ahead and we do a similar simulation um, at this particular position uh, as before we created a study uh, we have defined the materials um, we have a coil that is uh, that is same as before um, and uh, we have 720 turns 27 gauge wire at 0.8 amps per turn um, and now I have uh, looked I've re requested the force acting on the armature and uh, we're going to take a look at the result table uh, and very quickly EMS has told us that it's about 4.14 newtons so really the force now with which um, uh, the force acting on the plunger is about four uh, four newtons. Okay. Um, so uh, at this particular force, um, uh, we can now use this force value to determine uh, the spring constant of the spring. Or if you want to design a spring, this would be a good time um, for you to uh, design. So um, that's uh, 4 Newtons uh, and uh, you can use this value to define F equals Kx and you know the X uh, that is the total um, um, compression that the spring underwent uh, from the initial position to the final position that's about 3 millimeters for this particular uh, device and then you can use this information to actually come up with uh, with the spring constant so it works out to be about uh, 1.4 um, works out to be about 1.4 Newton per millimeter okay all right now uh, we studied this at a couple of positions the the, the lower most position at the most compressed position uh, now you might be wondering well you know what uh, what really happens in the intermediate positions and if you really take a look at it there can be infinite number of intermediate positions uh, but uh, EMS has a nice feature called parametric study which helps you to parametrize any particular dimension and study how your model varies with respect to this dimension. But before we go there let me just plot the magnetic flux density for this new uh, position and you see here that most of the armature is uh, almost saturated or, or, or very close to saturation. Okay, um, at this particular uh, holding position. Um, if you want to um, not have this, then you may want to change your material for something that has a much higher saturation rate uh, and so on. So you can make uh, a call about uh, how long this armature operates and so on um, and, and you can uh, understand and find out the best uh, possible configuration, material, etc. for this application. Now let me just uh, go back to the uh, line of uh, thought that we were going through basically to understand what happens um, to the plunger basically the force acting as the plunger uh, is in the various positions and to be able to do that we can um, realize that with respect to what is known as a parametric study. So let's go ahead and uh, look at what, what it is. 
Now, um, I have a distance here, which is basically, as you see here, is the distance between the top uh, part as well as uh, the place where the, the spring is. So it's basically the distance um, here of the solenoid. Uh, now this distance uh, I can now have as a parameter. Okay. So the objective is to understand, take one of the uh, mates here, which is this one, and basically have this value as a parameter. So what that enables me to do is I can vary this parameter right inside simulation automatically and have EMS compute a variety or a plethora of cases for me. Okay. So as before I create a study, except now that you see that it has a different icon, it's basically uh, a parametric study. So what it means is um, I have uh, asked the program to compute it as a parametric uh, type of study. Uh, we have applied the material just as before. Uh, we have applied a coil uh, and, and notice that the, it's, it's a DC coil. So the, the current and the um, number of turns, none of those changes uh, in this particular program. And finally, we ask the program to compute what are the forces acting on the plunger. Now, um, this is where uh, really you specify what scenarios you want to uh, want to simulate. For example, we did the 8.7 mm. That was the extreme position. And, and the 5.7 mm, that's the position where the spring is completely compressed. Let's say we want two other intermediate position at, uh, at 1 mm uh, uh, from, from each of them. And, and you can have a plethora of scenarios. There is no uh, limit to the number of parameters. But just to highlight this, we're going to just have four scenarios. And we're going to study what really happens uh, to the force acting on the plunger in each of these scenarios. Okay. Uh, as before, um, uh, we have solved the problem and we're going to take a look at uh, the results straight away. Now, uh, we're going to take a look at it uh, basically with respect to the forces. As you see here, we want to understand what is the Y component of the force uh, with the scenarios. Okay. So now this is really the Y component of the force at each scenario. So at, at scenario 1, at scenario 2, um, scenario 3, and scenario 4. So as the plunger moves up and compresses the spring, um, the force acting on it increases. Um, and, and that's uh, what happens, and this is how the force increases. Um, okay? And you can have a lot more intermediate positions if you really want to, but this is really um, the case here. Now uh, we can also look at the magnetic flux density. Now this is the flux density at the, at, at the first scenario. And uh, we're going to go ahead and animate the same. And you can see how the force, uh, how really um, the force changes um, here. And, and, and as you notice here, there is no real uh, straight linear formula for the force. So the program actually moves, the, uh, moves this plunger at each of these positions and computes the force, recomputes. It resolves the entire equation and computes the force. So um, what I haven't shown you is the solution. And, and uh, I mean the solving process, which is done behind the scenes. Uh, we have already solved this problem. But if anybody is interested, um, uh, you, you can uh, go to our website and request a trial version of the software where you will be able to do uh, all of the things that I mentioned uh, by yourself. Okay, so really um, this is how um, you can go ahead and design solenoids and, and understand the forces and the magnetic flux distribution and so on. There are a few things that uh, was not really the topic uh, for today, but I'm going to cover them now uh, just in very brief uh, but uh, for, we will tackle them uh, in another pr webinar or if you go to our YouTube channel, you might uh, end up finding uh, many videos related to it. Um, one of the things I'm going to resort back to the default configuration that we used here. One of the things that might be of interest to uh, users uh, is to understand, okay, at this particular um, uh, temperature, uh, I mean, at that particular current, how is the temperature going to be distributed inside my solenoid? So heating of these things is always a concern. And one can actually do that because EMS has multi-physics capability that allows you to couple your simulation to both thermal as well as motion. 
Okay, uh, it's certainly a topic for another day, uh, but uh, just wanted to let you guys know that uh, you will be able to couple this to thermal and that helps you to understand the temperature distribution everywhere, especially in the coils and, and if the coil is touching other components and how it spreads through. Uh, is important to know and one can easily know that uh, using a thermal couple thermal simulation. You can do a couple motion simulation to really understand the dynamics of the armature um, and, uh, and, and, and how long it takes to open and close etc. That, that's uh, kind of important and you can understand that by using a coupled uh, motion simulation. And these are really topics that we will be dealing with uh, in, in subsequent or future uh, webinars. Okay? So with this uh, in mind, uh, with this uh, introduction and a, a brief look at our product, I'm going to go back and revert back to the PowerPoint and uh, just cover a few things here, um, help you to understand how we, uh, how we um, segment and, and market our products. So the EMS product really has, uh, we have two, two main products. Uh, one is the EMS product and other is the HFworks product. Uh, again, today's webinar was more about the EMS product, the left side of it. Okay, Just to let you know, the HFworks product is, is a product for high frequency uh, RF and microwave uh, simulation. We can do resonance as parameters and antennas and there's there are probably many webinars that have already been recorded in this topic. In case you are interested, you can uh, reach them uh, by visiting our website. Uh, as far as EMS products are concerned, uh, it's, it's, it's basically grouped into two different bundles. One is the EMS professional. The EMS professional is everything that we saw today um, is there. Um, it comes with six different simulations, the electric and the magnetic simulations. And the EMS premium comes with all the other um, uh, uh, multi-physics capability. Now with the EMS professional, you can couple that to a thermal simulation, a motion simulation, as well as a structural simulation, um, or you can actually um, use the EMS premium. Okay. So these are the product bundles. If you want to know more about them, uh, you can visit our website and uh, or you can also write to us uh, and, and we'll give you more details regarding uh, the price information, the pricing information and so on. Um, and uh, in case you're wondering, uh, the things that I showed today, what do you really need uh, to be able to do something uh, uh, what you saw? Okay, To be able to do any kind of linear actuator simulation, what, what I showed you today, uh, without any uh, add into motion or uh, add into thermal, uh, what you would need is basic SOLIDWORKS 3D CAD. If you have uh, version 2015, 16, 17, all of them are uh, absolutely fine. And you need what is called as the base EMS product, which is EMS professional. Okay? Um, you will actually be able to do most of the things that I showed you today uh, with these products. Now, on behalf of uh, EMS, uh, we thank you all for uh, today's uh, for attending today's webinar. Um, some important links are given in this slide. Um, I think uh, it might be worthwhile your time if you are interested to know more about our product to especially visit our YouTube uh, video sites. There are really um, I, uh, many, many videos that talk about different aspects of the product and the different applications. Um, and um, you can always reach us at the following uh, uh, coordinates or 1-800 number or you can write to us at sales at emworks.com. Uh, with this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, answer some of the questions that were uh, asked during today's uh, presentation. Uh, the first one is, uh, what are the thermal levels? Okay, and I think that has been answered, but I just want to reiterate that we can couple our uh, simulations to uh, thermal simulation and you can really understand what is the temperature distribution in the coil and in the rest of the um, uh, solenoid at, uh, at each of the operating conditions. Uh, EMS has that facility, uh, can do that. Um, then the next scenario, uh, how are the forces interpolated between the scenario? Actually, there is no interpolation here. What EMS does is it creates the scenario. It, uh, it creates a new model. It's all done behind the scenes. It's all automatic. If you specify the parametric, uh, the dimension that you want to parameterize and you give those values, EMS actually moves the plunger and, and recreates the new model, re-simulates and gives you the results. So there is really no interpolation going on here. Uh, we actually go to the exact position and solve the equations at that particular position. 
Okay, so um, I think these were some of the questions and if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Um, if not, uh, we will uh, close this particular uh, session. I thank you all again um, for joining us today. I hope this session was informative. Um, uh, I will be sending you a link uh, to today's recording of this webinar, so feel free to view that later or share it with your colleagues if they were, if you think uh, they will be interested in the, uh, seeing such a thing. Um, uh, with that, uh, we also urge you to go to our website and YouTube channel to uh, see about it and look forward to seeing you in the future uh, webinars. Um, okay. Um, and uh, there was one question uh, regarding how do you contact for trial. Even for trial, you can just go to sales at emworks.com uh, and, and, and uh, ask us about the trial. But meanwhile, I'm going to uh, just uh, I'll divert your attention to our website, uh, emworks.com. If you hear, if you go to emworks.com, you can see um, if you're ready for a trial, all you need is to click here, just give your email address and we will send you all information regarding trial. Um, there are some webinars that, uh, that might be of interest to you. These are all uh, some of the past webinars and there is uh, one coming up in the future. Uh, also, you can see the webinars based on the product. There are a lot more here if you want to scroll down. And uh, last but not the least, uh, if you want to understand our videos, um, we have a we have a big YouTube uh, channel that talks about uh, uh, the the different products, different applications, etc. So um, I think uh, these resources um, will be uh, quite useful if you would like to know more about our product. Okay, thank you very much and have a, a great day.